Hey guys, everybody knows Alec Baldwin shot somebody on the set of Rust and ended up killing an innocent person, uh, which is a horrible event. One of the things he said in his own defense is, I cocked the gun, but I didn't pull the trigger. Is that true? Well, we're not going to figure that out around all these old books up here. And I do have a gun right here, like the one they were using on the set. But I think this is something where we go on location ourselves to my underground bunker where we can explore this in greater detail. So let's adjourn and we'll reconvene there. Hey guys, welcome to the underground bunker. Let's look at some of the gun technology involved in handguns and what was being used on the rust set in all likelihood from what I've read, how that compares to more modern firearms and see if we can figure out what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Because if you remember, Alec Baldwin has said, hey, look, I, I didn't pull the trigger. I cocked the gun. I didn't pull the trigger. So I didn't do anything intentionally. Now, that doesn't make any difference. You pointed a firearm at somebody that was loaded with live ammunition and you shot them. There was negligence involved at least. I mean, obviously, I don't think he did it intentionally to hurt somebody. But he intentionally pointed a gun at somebody and he intentionally engaged the mechanism of that gun that could cause it to fire whether he pulled the trigger or not. But I will show you why that is uh, likely untrue that he didn't pull the trigger, whether he realized it or not is a different story. But uh, unless the gun was broken, and I don't think it was, uh, he pulled the trigger. So he's filming a cowboy kind of movie, and that generally is going to involve uh, often, uh, they can be older guns than this, but single action army style revolvers. This is a Colt, and this is a replica, kind of old west style uh, revolvers. And we'll talk about how they work. So a revolver, there's no hidden agenda there. It usually has, uh, where the, where the cartridges are, it's going to revolve as you fire the gun, right? So let's take a look at this cool, dirty, hairy kind of style Smith and Wesson. You see the, uh, firearm revolving. So as you fire and cock it again, it's going to revolve around and they often have six shots in them. So six shooter, another name for that. And these, these are progressively more modern as you move here. And this one, we'll talk about that. And then these are automatics. So you have revolvers and then you have uh, automatic firearms, which are like these. And they take a magazine and they're automatic because they self-reload. You don't have to do anything yourself to cause them to reload. After you fire it, the slide will come back and that's going to eject the empty cartridge and it's going to pick up a new one. In a revolver, you're responsible for that because you are doing the mechanical action that causes it to revolve. Notice the Colt goes this way, Smith & Wesson goes that way. Just something to know. So that's the difference. We call these automatic, they're really semi-automatic because you have to pull the trigger each time to make it fire. You can't hold the trigger back and it just keep firing. That's fully automatic and that's a machine gun. And that's registered, or that's a class three kind of item. So you can't just have that without going through all the mess and the paperwork it takes to get one of those, which is expensive and difficult. Nevertheless, they're awesome. So let's get back to looking at this. So this is a Colt single action army revolver. And single action means that when you pull the trigger, it's only going to do one action. So if I'm pulling the trigger like this, this gun isn't doing anything, is it? Right? So I have to cock it. Okay. And then it's going to do the single action that it's going to do, which is drop that hammer. And that's what it did. So let's look. I'd already checked this to make sure it was empty. But this is how you have to really check if you don't want to point the gun at your head to see if these are empty. That's suboptimal, right? You got to pull this open and look down each of the chambers. Um, I mean, you could do it this way, but that's really stupid, right? So these aren't, you know, guns get safer over time, in my opinion. The, the technology involved makes them uh, better. And this is, for the casual user, potentially a dangerous situation. So anyway... That's how you look at it. So that's a single action, right? So a double action revolver can do two things. Let's check it. And that is cock it and fire it, right? That's double action. I can go single action on it because I can cock it myself. And now the trigger is performing the single action of dropping that hammer. And automatic guns can be the same thing. They can be a single action like a 1911-45, or they can be a double action like this Beretta. So right now I'm going to sink. My hands are slick with oil. So right now I'm going single action, just dropping the hammer. But look, it can also cock it 
and fire it just like the newer style revolvers can. This is a double action only revolver, which you might want to carry that in a pocketbook or something if you don't want the hammer to be able to be snagged and, and brought back. So it's going to do the action of cocking internally with a hammer and firing all, all the time. You can't go single action with it. And one reason why that can matter is for these guns, say, if I want to pull it single action, there's a lot of weight because I have to overcome the spring to bring the hammer back and fire it. And if I want to go single action, like from target shooting or something like that, then I have a very light trigger, almost a hair trigger with this gun for the single action aspect of it. So that allows you to be more accurate. So some of the things that are bad about this gun, say compared to newer guns, well, first of all, just look at the sights on it. I mean, it's ridiculous. And if you look down at it, you're not even going to be able to see the rear sight until you do cock it. And your sight picture is fairly lame because it's a big blade sight with this little canyon they've carved there. And you get progressively better sights as you get into newer guns. You've got some orange up here, high vis, white, so you can and you can see it all as you're operating the firearm. So that's nice. So how does this work? How do, how do we end up shooting somebody with this gun and blame it on the gun instead of these newer guns that have more safety features? So in these newer guns, let's take this Colt Anaconda for instance, you will see that the hammer does not have a firing pin on it, right? The firing pin is separate from it and that can be part of a safety feature. It also has a bar here. So if this hammer, hammer were to go forward, it can't even get to the firing pin. You see that? It's up in front of the firing pin. So I have to be depressing the trigger all the way for this thing to fire. If I let go of the trigger, it will not let the firing pin come into uh, contact with the cartridge. So that's nice. So that's a pretty cool safety feature. This one is a little older style. And here you see the firing pin is in fact mounted on the hammer, but it still has a bar in it that has to be overcome in order for this to, to fire. So you don't have the um, firing pin protruding through here at any time other than when you've got the trigger depressed and you drop the hammer. When you get back to these older guns, things get a little different. I don't know, you're probably not gonna be able to see it here, but the firing pin is actually sticking through the, um, uh, the, the frame of the gun and in, into where the chambers are. So one of the problems with these old guns is, is if a jolt were to happen or something hit this hammer hard enough, it, it potentially could fire the gun when you don't mean to without cocking it and also without pulling the trigger. So sometimes people don't carry around under the hammer, uh, but you know, you just need to, you just need to know that and you need to understand how the gun works and then it's fine like that, but it's definitely not as nice safety wise as compared to these newer guns. So let's get into the Alec Baldwin situation here. What happened here? So he says, I cocked it and it went off, right? It went off. I didn't pull the trigger. Well, it's not doing anything without pulling the trigger, right? Okay, fine. So I pull it back a little bit and let it go. What happens? It goes to quarter cock. You see that? It does not return all the way. What if I pulled it back in a little bit more? Oh, it goes to half cock. It don't go off half cocked. So without pulling the trigger, I'm not shooting anybody, right? And then I'm back here at full cock. And Actually, if I pull the trigger and then let it go, because I'm like, oops, I didn't mean to shoot this, it will stop. Unless the gun's broken, it will stop on its way down. So even this old gun, when you're pulling the hammer back, is fairly safe if you don't have the trigger depressed. Now, it is possible, of course, that you had the trigger depressed and you weren't paying any attention to what you're doing, or maybe you had just a little pressure on it and you didn't realize it was enough that when you dropped that hammer, that it would fire. But unless the gun's busted, you're going to have to be pulling this trigger back in order to fire it. That's just the way that it works. You see that? So what's it gonna do? I mean, if I let it go, it's still gonna stop. Now, if it were broken and they got the gun and, and for some reason the sears were busted in it or something like that and you could just pull this back and let it go and nothing would stop this hammer from falling without the trigger, that would be a defective firearm even for this old class and you would be able to, I think, replicate that with the gun and be able to see, well, hey, that didn't work. The way it was supposed to. Now it's still no excuse to be pointing a gun at somebody and pulling the hammer back, letting it go, and thinking, well, if it's loaded, it's still okay because I'm not pulling the trigger. I mean, to me, pulling the trigger has very little to do with whether you did something unsafe there or not, because you were taking all the actions except pulling the trigger. So when you're going to point a gun at somebody, assuming that's what you want to do, you need to understand what can cause that gun 
to go off. And in my opinion, you never, ever have an excuse to say, I didn't know it was loaded. You can always check yourself and you always should. Now I understand they use different kinds of cartridges for what they're doing in movies and a cursory glance in a gun like this can make it hard to tell whether what, what you've got in it and all that. But sorry, that's if you're going to make a movie with these kind of guns, you have to have competent people involved in it that know what they're looking at, that don't put live ammunition around the kind of ammunition that you think you're going to be using. You just, I, there's no way that this could happen without negligence involved, even if the gun were defective. And I don't think it was. And I think the idea that you can fire this gun without pulling the trigger when it's out of your holster and you're pointing at somebody, I've just shown that's not how these guns work. So I have these other guns up here just, just to show you a little bit more modern technology because revolvers also don't have typically external safeties on them. So the safety is that it's hard to pull the hammer back and then you got to pull the trigger to fire the gun. Uh, some modern guns like a Beretta can have a safety on it. See, trigger doesn't work and now trigger works. But a lot of even modern firearms, they, they don't have safeties on them. This gun does not have its own separate safety. There's This is just a decocker, right? Same thing on this uh, HK. Now, like I say, the newer revolvers are nicer because I can pull this back. And first of all, I can reload it. I can empty it faster and I can reload it faster. And I can check to see whether it's loaded or not very quickly and without pointing the gun at, at anything. For these old styles, it's not like that. You've got to flip this open and one at a time, which these guns are still around because listen to that. That's awesome. You would have to push this and plunge that in. See that? Uh, coming out there that will push the empty cartridge out and you do that and then you've got to load it one at a time well that, that pretty much blows doesn't it and then, to speed shoot these you can buy you all six come out at once and then you can have what's called a speed loader you just drop six back down in there turn a little bit this baby's reloaded and you go of course if you really want to be able to reload fast then you gotta you gotta have something like this where you drop your magazine out and you slam a new one in there and you're ready to rock so we've taken a trip through time to old style single action revolvers, modern style double action revolvers, double action only, and then automatic firearms and looked at a little bit of the difference in those. You know, the automatics, I think I showed that already. They're gonna slide back. The recoil is gonna push this back. It's got an ejector. It's gonna send out the empty cartridge and it's gonna pull up a new one from the magazine and you're still in the game. You just keep pulling the trigger until whatever you want to stop moving has stopped moving. That's the idea behind that. So I know Alec Baldwin is, I think, settling his civil case. That's fine. Should he have criminal charges? I don't know. But his story about not pulling the trigger is difficult to believe. Maybe he didn't know it or didn't realize it. But the trigger needs to be back on even these old style guns in order for them to fire. Even with all the, the lack of current safety features that they don't have. They did have that. Quarter cocking and half cocking and the, the like. So they just don't fall like that. Otherwise, people will be getting killed by these things all the time because, I mean, hell, in order to check whether it's loaded or not, you got to be able to pull the uh, hammer back some, but it's not going anywhere, right? So anyway, thanks for joining me down in my underground bunker, and I'll talk to you later. So we're back upstairs now, and I hope from what we've looked at, you can see that there is no excuse to accidentally shoot someone even if it is an accident it's still in my opinion negligent even with an old gun like this if you know what you're doing and you know how to use them and you follow basic gun safety then it's something that should never occur there's no excuse for it i don't know how many bullets i've fired over the years it's well into six figures never shot anybody by accident don't plan on doing it uh, i hope um, safety concerns on these sets can be better addressed they won't be if people don't even know what they're talking about, which is guns going off without people pulling the triggers. So anyway, I thought we'd look at a little bit of evidence in this case, and that's it. Thanks.